Okay, how many times have you come to a shoot and then your mind goes completely blank when it's time to actually take the photo? You basically have no idea where to place your food, what props will work, and all of a sudden, all those rules of composition you learned, they dissolve. It's happened to all of us. So today I really want to focus on a few techniques that you can start using in order to really elevate your compositions and create setups that are original, unique, and eye-catching. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sukena and I am so excited to teach you how to level up your food photography and start making money from it. Now I drop a video every single Wednesday so make sure that you hit the subscription button but also you can follow me along on Instagram where I'm there practically every single day with tips and techniques that I've learned in the past 13 years of working as a professional food photographer. So let's jump straight into compositions. Now the first tip I have for you is if you really want to elevate your compositions and be thoughtful about them is to actually plan out your compositions well in advance. And this way you can be really intentional about what rules of composition you want to use. So what I like to do is once I have a shot list from a client or for my own personal content, I like to actually plan out two or three shots that I'd like to get from the final recipe or the buildup of the recipe. And then I actually sit down and sketch these out so I know exactly where I need to place my items when it comes to composing the shot. So by sketching my compositions, I'm not under any pressure on the actual day of the shoot, trying to think on the spot where I'm gonna put my food, where I'm gonna put my props, how I'm gonna style my food. So pre-planning this part of the photo shoot just ensures that I save so much time on the day of the shoot and I'm able to nail my final shots with stellar compositions. So let me give you an example to explain myself. This shot of brownies and chocolate mousse was part of a series of Valentine's recipes that we were shooting for a local magazine. Now, prior to the shoot, I made a quick sketch of the actual setup so I knew exactly what props I was going to use, where I would actually place the main food, as well as all the supplementary food, what angle I wanted to use, as well as the style of lighting. So by doing this, on the day of the actual shoot, it literally only took me a few shots to get that final image, and it was immediately approved by the client. So this meant that not only did I save time, but I actually had extra time where I could shoot any supplementary images for my own content. So you can now see how sketching out and pre-planning can be such a lifesaver on the day of the shoot. Okay, let's move on to tip number two, and that's to forget all the tips. Yep, all the rules of composition. Forget everything you've actually learned and actually go into your shoot with a completely clean slate. Now, before you think, Sukena, what are you talking about? You actually teach rules of composition inside your paid program, Food Photography Bootcamp, right? And not only that, you also teach advanced rules of composition in that very same program. So hear me out for just a moment. Sometimes when you're approaching a shoot and you have all of these millions of rules of composition inside your head, it can get really overwhelming as to which one to apply, which one to use, or sometimes they just hinder your creativity on the spot, right? Should I use the rule of thirds? Or maybe let me incorporate some negative space here. Or how about I just learned about asymmetry. Let me also apply that over here. And we mustn't forget the five grid. So how can I incorporate that? So you can see there are so many rules and techniques when it comes to composition that sometimes it can get just a little bit overwhelming. So every once in a while, I want you to forget all the rules, okay, and just do what feels right and what looks right to you. So instead of thinking about the rules of composition, what I want you to do is look at your final image and then ask yourself these three questions. Does the hero food stand out? Does the image look balanced overall? Does the photo tell a story? Now, if the answer is yes to all of these, then it really doesn't matter if you've used the rule of thirds, if you've used the rule of odds, if you've incorporated curves or any other rule for that matter. What really matters is you've got an image where the hero food's standing out, it's telling a story and you are happy with it. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Now, here's an image of a tart. This was shot for another magazine. And when approaching this particular composition, the stylist and I had no rules in our head or any images when it came to composition. We knew exactly what colors we wanted to incorporate based on color theory and the brand colors that the magazine sent us. So that dictated the choice of background. 
But when we place the tart on the backdrop, the tart itself looks so beautiful that we didn't worry about any rules. The stylist simply cut the tart using an unusual cut for the slices and that was literally it. So whilst looking at this picture, you may think, oh, but we used the rule of odds because, you know, there's five slices or that we only placed one prop to the side. Or perhaps when you see all that negative space around, you're probably thinking, was that intentional? But in all honesty, with this image, we literally had no prior thoughts no rules in our heads. So sometimes you just need to focus on the food and not really worry about rules. And when we had the final shot done, the tart really stood out. The overall image looked really well balanced and when paired together with the other two desserts from the story, you have this cohesiveness and an element of storytelling. So every now and then, overthinking can really kill your shot and your creativity. And I highly recommend not overthinking it when it comes to the rules of composition and your shoots. So my last and final tip is based on a very similar principle, which is to embrace minimalism. Now, this is when your compositions will focus solely on the food and the composition of the food and the food styling, literally on a macro level rather than the overall composition that's on your backdrop. Minimalism is such a fantastic way to really put the focus on your food and really make it stand out and highlight it. But when you embrace minimal compositions, this really puts the focus on your food and on the ingredients you're using, as well as other important aspects of your food photography, such as your lighting, which is so crucial and it can really make or break an image. Basically, when you're composing minimally, you've got nothing else to hide behind. So it really forces you to get really good with food styling, with lighting because that's all your viewer will see. So here are a few examples of images that can be considered minimalist where there's no props besides the vessel that the food is actually placed on. And you can see with all of these three images, the composition is super simple. The hero food items stand out and focus has been placed on lighting, on shadows and on food styling in order to really help elevate the image. Now in this shot of bun cake, for example, the bun pan is really the hero with the unusual shape it makes. And with the addition of icing sugar, this really helps to bring out the pattern on the bun tin. So here we're using the food styling to really elevate this composition and image without too much propping. In the second image, again, the only prop is the platter on which the spices are placed but there's really careful thought in the arrangement of the spices in terms of what colors are next to each other, the choice of background that's been used in comparison to the color of the spices, as well as the texture within the spices. And that's why a simple minimalist composition really works for this image. And then lastly, in this third image, you have this giant scone where the emphasis is on texture. So take a note of the backdrop here. Take a note of the texture that's within the wooden background, for example, the crumpling of the napkin, as well as the various textures that are within the actual food. This is what we actually wanted to highlight in this composition. And therefore everything else in terms of propping and color has really been kept to a minimum. The strawberries are very vibrant and we wanted that to stand out. So now just to recap how you can create really thoughtful and compelling compositions when it comes to your food photography. Number one, pre-plan your compositions. Number two, don't think about compositional rules all the time. And number three, use minimalist compositions to really make your food images stand out. Now, if you found this video helpful and you really want me to literally hold your hand and teach you some advanced techniques when it comes to light manipulation, composition, creative editing, and most importantly, monetizing your image to make this into a really profitable and sustainable business, then make sure you're signed up to the waitlist for Food Photography Bootcamp. This is my signature paid program where students have gone on to work for clients such as Deliveroo, Betty Crocker, Moxie T, and P.F. Chang. So if you really want to learn the ins and outs of taking stunning shots and making serious money from it, Make sure you're signed up to the waitlist because class will open very soon. In the meantime, you can check out this video on how you can book more food photography clients, as well as this video here, all about lighting techniques. Now I'm gonna be back next week with a brand new video. So make sure you're subscribed to catch it when it drops. Have a great week and I'll see you then.